so the European EPIC network um, is, a, is a network, is the first network really that was uh, created in Europe, bringing together uh, many different stakeholders and focusing on higher education. So, of course, we have different alliances, different uh, networks specific for each country. But what we've noticed is that we are really missing this, um, this network that would bring together all different countries in the context of higher education, focus on uh, not only on business side, but supporting, of course, entrepreneurship, focusing on research evidence um, in educational technology, practitioners talking to students and asking their opinion. Um, so this is what we are uh, trying to do. And this is what we've been building for the past three years. Now, the, there are three main roles that EDN has. First, uh, and, and the objective, because uh, you may know that the EDN was, uh, is a project funded by the European Commission uh, within a strategic partnership in higher education. So we have three main goals. First of all, to build this first European network connecting relevant higher education institutions, initiatives in the field of educational technology. Later, we wanted to create an online space, and uh, that's answering the question why there's no Facebook for education yet. I will show you that there is, there is at least this little seed that is growing and we are building. Um, so the online, we are building an online platform that will not only share the, the knowledge on educational technology, but will also allow um, people to connect and to look for partners to their project, look, uh, projects, look, look for startups that are uh, coming up with brand new ideas and um, that you can test at your own institutions, um, bring in accelerators and, and students and teachers and uh, practitioners and innovators together. And finally, the third goal was to unite all different stakeholders. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we are talking about universities, entrepreneurs, researchers, industry, policymakers as well, and allow for this dialogue because in Europe, I always say that we really like our individuals and we really like working in our own departments, our own universities. Very often we don't know what our colleagues do um, in, our, in our own institution. So how can we do it in Europe and in Asia or in, in, the, in the US, it's even easier because they have one language and here every uh, having uh, all of the participants, I bet that we'll be having at least 20 different uh, languages uh, in the in the room. So how do we do it in Europe? And that's what we've been doing with our four partner institutions. So that's the core group. And you've met already uh, Blair and Johanna from Oulu. Uh, you met uh, me from IE University in Spain. Uh, from UCL we have uh, Alison and from Leuven we have uh, Wim. Uh, so we are the core group that said, okay, we have to do something with that. And uh, we applied for the grant to the European Commission. We were uh, one of 85 uh, awarded. Um, well, we, we were the ones that were won with other 85 um, competitors. And we got this grant to, to build a network. And I must tell you that uh, the results, even though uh, we, uh, we were hit during half of our project we hit with uh, pandemic, uh, the results are quite, quite impressive. And that's what I wanted to share with you. First of all, we grew from having four partner universities to being right now 13 different institutions from all across Europe. Um, we have uh, Grenoble School of Management from France. We have Swiss Ecolider, uh, Switzerland, of course, Educate from the UK, Mindset Israel, uh, Malta College of Arts, Science and Technology, Learnovate uh, from Trinity College Dublin, Ireland. We have Linus University in Sweden, uh, Münster and uh, Kempen uh, Universities from Germany. So, and we are still growing. Just yesterday I had chat with, with Netherlands, the other day with Denmark. So there are still more universities that want to join us. And uh, how do we choose those universities is also not an accident. So we are looking at people who are relevant in the European ethics scene. So people who are already doing something with the educational technology, with entrepreneurship, supporting evidence-based entrepreneurship in Europe. And we are trying to bring this group together and, and we co-create, we work together, we meet in plenty of different events um, and we talk to each other and we are trying to uh, build new projects and, and work on innovative education in Europe. Then there are these four main ways in which we, which we do it. First of all, we promote effective collaboration. 
Um, and um, how we do it, we do it mainly through our events. So we organize these meetings as here, where we invite uh, different guests, we share our own knowledge, we ask our member institutions to, to share their expertise as well. Um, but we also organize closed events where only members are coming together in this very, very VIP group. We are working on different, uh, different ideas. We are also boosting innovation in education. And that's mainly through our case studies, good practices, talking to different startups um, and sharing case studies written by our member and partner institutions. So we are zooming in a little bit to each partner country and trying to get the, the juice from uh, what they are doing and share it with the rest of our community so that you have open access to all these materials and that you can just have this uh, sneak peek and, and have a look at what's going on in each of the, of the European countries. Later, we are focusing on fostering ethic entrepreneurship. So we definitely don't, don't leave business aside. Uh, it's a very important part of our uh, community. And very often we work with, uh, with startups, we invite them to, to, have, uh, to have the spotlight on our, our stages share their expertise, we analyze how, we, how startups collaborate with researchers, with uh, educators, with teachers. Um, and we also write about it and we, we share uh, interviews and, uh, and try to bring people together. So we also work on networking. And finally, providing facts and data. And this is extremely important for us as well. Uh, we have a section called knowledge on our, our website where we try to translate big research documents that let's be honest, not everybody will read, uh, to more digestible language. So we are summarizing the, um, uh, the newest and relevant uh, evidence, uh, results and evidence uh, to more digestible version, more digestible articles so that everybody has access to it. So we also promote this um, evidence-based entrepreneurship and try to, to provide you with evidence so that you have better access to it. Finally, this is the platform. This is what we, what we do. This is our Facebook for education. So um, here you can see an example of, uh, of the website, um, uh, of, of the case study section, and some of the, um, of the articles that, uh, that we recently posted. You can just go direct. There's no need to, to log in. You can just uh, go ahead and, and read uh, what, we, what we post. And um, apart from case studies, we are interviewing plenty of uh, experts from all across the world. Here we have. Uh, Joe Haslam from IE, but also uh, Odgert Feitman from, um, from Norway. Um, so we are really trying to not to close ourselves only to our partner countries, um, but going a little bit further and trying to, to use our connections because as, as the, the partner uh, core group with our members, we know many people, as Maria Spies, who joined us today, that can also help us and share their knowledge. So that's, that's what we are trying to do. Finally, we are promoting um, relevant EdTech events in Europe because you will find plenty of summaries um, from the US. There are really some summaries from Asia. Um, and well, let's be honest, in the recent years, it's been a bit easier because you can join uh, any event you want because most of them are online. Uh, but we are going back to, to more presential conferences and there wasn't a place that would summarize all of these events. So also remember that if you are organizing any, any competition, any event that will be relevant for the rest of the European ethic scene, just let us know and we are very, very happy to, to add it to, to the list. And finally, when you are logging to the, to the um, uh, platform, because all the materials that I showed so far are with open access. If you would like to start connecting with people, you will have to just create your profile and, uh, and that's it. You create your profile, you set up uh, your, your settings, you choose the areas that you are interested in, uh, you choose your objectives and the platform will automatically suggest you main contacts. Uh, you can search for people from different countries. Here I, I did some random search on uh, people from Norway as an example. So if you would like to enter a specific, um, a specific country, specific sector, or you are looking for information on uh, educational technology in very specific part of Europe, here is where you can find people that are there to provide you with information, to get information from you. So we are already starting to, to build this 
EdTech network in, uh, in, the, in the online environment for Europe. And we have uh, over 30,000 unique viewers um, on, on the platform, uh, over 70 articles published uh, and more to come. I'm, I'm having some pub pipeline there to, to be published waiting for me. Um, and uh, so far we have 700 users. So the more the merrier. And uh, of course, if you would like to uh, create your own profile, feel, feel free to do it. You can just go directly to the etn.eu and, and sign up and start connecting with, uh, with other participants. Now, saying all this, because this event is, um, is, uh, is an event that is summarizing three years of our work. For these past three years, we've been uh, working on, on all these materials, all these events, trying to connect people, having new, um, new projects coming up. But what's coming next? Because uh, three years is the, is the time that we have from the European Commission to kick off the project. Um, but uh, for us, the important next step is, of course, to continue working with the European Commission. So we'll definitely uh, apply for a new grant. And uh, after these three years, we already proven our, ourselves to be a very solid partner for the, for the European Commission. And despite of COVID, uh, we accomplished our KPIs. So, a big tap of, of our own <laughs> to ourselves because we did it and we are very happy that we can have you here right now uh, and share these results with you, share the, all these articles and talk about the future and future, um, future events that we are thinking about. Um, and our work in, the, in this post-pandemic landscape is something that's really relevant for all of us, not only for policymakers uh, that, that we are working with, but also uh, for all, us, all of us as a, as a network community in Europe. And we will be more than happy to hear from you uh, also now when we will meet in, in the Gather Town in, in our virtual, uh, virtual expo. Uh, we want to hear your suggestions. So we are already planning on, uh, on all the new things that we will be doing from uh, September onwards. Uh, but this network is for you. So if, there are anything, uh, if there's anything that we can do to make your work better, or if there's any suggestions that you would have uh, for us, just catch any of the, of the partners in the, in the fair, and we'll be very happy to have a chat. Mm -hmm.